Hello and welcome to the News from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today at Rifa Palace the Chairman of the Gulf International Bank, Dr Abdullah bin Hassan Al Abdullah Qaeda, and the members of the Board of Directors, in the presence of the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid Mohammed Al Maraj. His Royal Highness noted the work of the Gulf International Bank in the development of its services in Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince affirmed keenness to develop the financial and banking sector in the Kingdom and strengthening the work of its institutions to make consecutive achievements which contribute to affirming the Kingdom's status as a hub for businesses and investment according to established and developed legislations. His Royal Highness noted the achievements of the Gulf International Bank highlighting that the financial and banking sector institutions are in line with the continuous development of the sector. He stated that the financial services are among the top priorities, which stems from the Kingdom's keenness on implementing the Economic Vision 2030. His Royal Highness expressed pride in the financial and banking sector for the job opportunities it provides for the people of Bahrain, wishing the bank success. For their part, the Chairman and members of the Gulf International Bank's Board of Directors expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his keenness in developing and supporting the financial and banking sector. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday held his weekly majlis at Rifa Palace. Members of the Royal Family, senior government officials, members of the Shura Council and Council of Representatives, members of municipal councils, religious and community leaders, journalists and diplomats attended the majlis. His Royal Highness welcomed a broad range of visitors at the weekly majlis, which demonstrates Bahrain's commitment to rooted traditions and values that are underpinned by His Majesty the King's aspirations to maintain a strong bond amongst Bahrain society. The Majlis visitors extended their appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness for hosting the Majlis and emphasised the important role His Royal Highness plays in advancing sustainable development to guarantee prosperity and opportunity for the people of Bahrain.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the opening session of the International Conference in support of security and peace in the Middle East, which was held yesterday in Warsaw, Poland, in the presence of the President of Poland, Andrzej Duda, and the Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence. The Minister thanked the Polish President for hosting the conference, praising the great efforts and initiatives of the US to establish regional and international peace and security and its role in convening this important conference, which serves security and stability in the Middle East as one of the most important pillars of security in the world. In his speech on threats to peace and security in the Middle East, the Minister stressed the th that Iran poses a great multidimensional threat to the security of the region and the world. He added that Iran adopts a policy of intervening in the internal affairs of other countries, provides various forms of support for violence, extremism and terrorism, and fuels strife in the region, all of which require more international collective actions to address this threat in order to contribute to the establishment of security and peace in the Middle East. He also reiterated Bahrain's commitment to work and cooperate with its allies in the region and beyond in order to enhance the security, peace and development in the region and to benefit its countries and peoples. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in an international conference in support of security and peace in the Middle East today in Warsaw, Poland, in the presence of the Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence. Mike Pence paid tribute to the tangible efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain in confronting Iran's terrorism, especially its serious threats to international navigation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed thanks and appreciation for the United States for this initiative, which reflects its strategic role and its keenness on cooperating with its allies in the region to promote peace and stability in the Middle East. He affirmed that Bahrain's participation in the conference reflects its keenness on promoting international cooperation on all levels and its support and efforts towards establishing peace in the region, stressing the importance of continuing such efforts to reach peaceful solutions to the regional issues. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with Poland's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jacek Zapytovic, and expressed appreciation for hosting the conference, which reflects keenness in establishing peace in the Middle East. He asserted Bahrain's keenness on strengthening the relations with Poland, noting the importance of such visits to serve the goals of the two countries. Poland's Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed appreciation for the participation of Bahrain's foreign minister in the conference, praising Bahrain's role and efforts in promoting peace in the region. During the meeting, Bahrain's Minister of Foreign Affairs presented Poland's Minister of Foreign Affairs with an invitation to visit Bahrain to develop relations and mutual cooperation. The Ministry of Education organised a national celebration on the occasion of the 18th anniversary of the National Action Charter, which included various activities in the presence of the Minister of Education, Dr Majid bin Ali al Nawemi, and a number of senior ministry officials, employees and students. The Minister announced the start of the National Action Charter Long Distance Relay Race Championship in Bahrain International Circuit, which is set to reach the National Action Charter Monument. The Minister then inaugurated a national exhibition themed A Charter of Gold, in the Ministry of Education's hall in Isa Town and announced the launch of a car carnival that has been created by a number of schools and educational institutions. A student march also started from the University of Bahrain until the National Chartic Monument with the participation of 4,000 students. The University also hosted a number of national charter competitions including football and athletics. The Minister of Education affirmed that the celebrations reflect the Ministry and the students' pride in the National Action Charter which resulted in historic transformation and developments in all fields. He also expressed appreciation for the kind patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and praised his role in the development of the educational march, noting that the Ministry is keen on following his royal directions regarding promoting Arab Bahraini identity and spreading the values of nationality, human rights and coexistence. The Ambassador of Bahrain to the Sultanate of Oman, Jamal bin Ahmed al Kabi, held yesterday a celebration at the Diplomatic Club on the occasion of the National Action Charter anniversary under the patronage of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, 
head of the GCC department and in the presence of accredited ambassadors and Bahraini citizens residing in the Sultanate. On February the 14th of 2001, 98.4% of the Bahraini population said yes to the National Action Charter, ushering a series of reforms in the political, economic, social and humanitarian fields. More details in this report with Shog Mohammed. 18 years ago today, Bahrain issued its National Action Charter, which became the basis on which the modern state was established. The reform process of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa began with the adoption of the National Action Charter by consensus by a whopping 98.4% of the population in the referendum held on February 14, 2001. This affirmed the solidarity of the people with the leadership in support of the reform efforts. The Charter deals with the general philosophy, principles and foundations that constitute the basic elements of society and the system of government, as well as the foundations of the national economy in seven consecutive chapters, preceded by an introduction that outlines the basic features of Bahrain's historical presence. The Charter paved the way for the numerous achievements the Kingdom has achieved in the political, economic, social and human development fields, among others. It ushered in an era of freedom of speech and an increase in the overall sources of media found in the country. It brought about many positive changes in the public and private sectors, which improved the lives of the workforce and the citizens of the kingdom. In spite of the small size of the Kingdom of Bahrain, the nation's projects and achievements have not ceased to continue in accordance with a vision that emphasizes that the citizen is the basis of development and its main goal. Democracy, human rights and free and fair elections have become a reality and pattern of practice in the political life of the Kingdom following the adoption of the National Action Charter. The Kingdom has also consistently ranked high on the scale of human rights and expatriate protection. The National Action Charter is a comprehensive document that transformed Bahrain through homegrown ideas and is a major landmark in the history of the nation. Every year we remember and celebrate the wise vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa which brought the kingdom to a new stage of renaissance and development on the basis of strong religious and national constants while emphasizing the needs of the citizens and honoring their patriotism and love for the kingdom and its leadership. The National Action Charter Monument was commissioned by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa as a gift to the people of Bahrain and to honor the National Charter. The result was a powerful statement of Bahraini national pride and a unique statement in the region about this historic nation. More in this report. Inaugurated in 2010, the National Charter Monument was commissioned by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa as a gift to the people of Bahrain. The monument commemorates Bahrain's adoption of the National Action Charter by a sweeping 98.4% majority on February 14, 2001, thus paving the way for the pioneering Royal Reform Project. The monument is one of the most symbolic structures in Bahrain's modern history and links the new generation with the historic heritage of the kingdom. According to the vision of His Majesty King Hamad, the structure records the patriotic contributions of national work pioneers and encloses the names of all those who voted for the 2001 National Action Charter. It reflects the people's support for the royal leadership, their resolve to maintain the social fabric and their contribution to enhancing Bahrain's democratic march. The building explores national history and identity in a series of vivid and unique visitor experiences. These include the National Action Charter Show, as well as programs and functions aiming to upgrade national culture, promote creative thoughts, and contribute to educational and cultural programs in cooperation with the relevant national and international establishments and organizations. The National Charter Monument is a vivid embodiment of the vision of a king and the history of a nation. The structure instills the basis of national unity and highlights the kingdom's rich cultural heritage, all the while documenting the contributions of the Bahraini people and actualizing the aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in leading the current and future generations to further development and prosperity. The National Action Charter also led a solid foundation for the democracy present in the kingdom and the legislative development that is consistent and unwavering. The National Action Charter set the path for a series of political changes paving the way for the new constitution and the national parliamentary elections with the establishment of a new legislative party, the National Assembly. 
The 2001 document was drafted by the people and for the people. It contains all details from the basis of the government to the protection of individual freedoms, equality, freedom of belief, expression and publishing, democratic life and principles of the free markets. Adaption of the National Action Charter ex exhibited the referral to, to the direct democracy or the process of direct democracy. Therefore, the, the popu pop popular will were exhibited directly in their voting, which was the highest, I think, among the whole re in the region and amongst the whole, the whole um, uh, uh, using uh, use, uh, usual use of this directly. It was 98.4. So that indicated uh, almost a consensus of all the people. Since the adoption of the national uh, action, uh, really we improved a lot because the chart itself it uh, consists of seven elements that would de develop any uh, country. Between these elements something which is for the society and for developing the woman and the, ch and the child of course. But all, all of it as a chart by itself it is really well solid chart that improved the Bahraini citizens and we uh, put for us lots of goals that we uh, aim these goals for the benefit of the society. The charter gave women the right to vote and run in parliamentary and municipal elections and enabled religious minorities the right to be represented for the first time in the bicameral parliament. All citizens are equal before the law in terms of rights and duties, without distinction of race, origin, language, religion or belief, the Charter reads. After the adoption of the National Action Charter, we went into a new era. The cornerstone of our democracy was the National Action Charter. Since then, we've had social reforms, political reforms, and that is the new era for Bahrain since 2001. We had our first election in 2002, and that was the first step of having the public be a part of the decision-making in Bahrain. In 2001, Bahrainis strongly backed proposals to turn the country into a constitutional monarchy under the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, uh, with an elected parliament and independent uh, judiciary. 98.4% uh, voted yes in the referendum. Uh, on the National Action Charter. Well, uh, February 14th is a day that marked uh, a new chapter for Bahrain. Uh, the constitutional referendum is considered the cornerstone for promoting freedoms uh, on the social, economic and political levels. The National Action Charter paved the way for a bicameral legislature made up of the Council of Representatives and the Shura Council, thus launching the drive to lay the foundations for a modern state with advanced constitutional institutions, laws and systems. During the inauguration of the Kingdom's heat-resistant brick factory in Salman Industrial City, under the patronage of the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Said bin Rashid al Ziyani, the Minister affirmed Bahrain's pride in the leadership of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, in opening more industrial and commercial facilities. He noted that industrial and commercial facilities attract large regional and international capitals, which is reflected in the confidence and the strength of Bahrain's economy. The Minister affirmed the support of the government for industrial, commercial and tourism projects, noting that this project coincides with Bahrain's National Action Charter anniversary celebrations and reflects the initiatives of the Bahraini private sector and affirms Bahrain's industrial competitive abil competitivities. The Board of Directors Chairman of the Kingdom Group of Companies, Saeed Kanu, affirmed that the inauguration of this industrial achievement is the first of its kind in Bahrain, that it expects to cover the needs of the Bahraini market and provide high-quality, heat-resistant construction products. He expressed pride in the development of the competitive projects in Bahrain, noting the Kingdom's support for Bahraini companies in all fields, through which they established a strong industrial sector and strong infrastructure locally and regionally. Under the patronage and deputised by the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa and BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Saga al attended the final match between the Royal Guard Team and the Bahrain Royal Air Force Team 
as part of the Marshalls Championship for the 2018 and 2019 units held at the Khalifa Sports City Stadium. The Royal Guard team won the championship after the match witnessed a strong competition and a large turnout. Upon the arrival of the BDF Chief of Staff, anthem was played. The closing ceremony was held at the end of the match where the Chief of Staff presented medals to the referees. He also presented to the Royal Guard teams with gold medals for winning first place and a commemorative gift was presented to the Chief of Staff. The final match included participation of the Berean Defence Force Band. The Washington Times has described the Kingdom of Bahrain as the homeland of tolerance, where Bahrain has been a crossroads of trade and culture since the Greeks and remains the homeland of tolerance for many religions and races. The newspaper published an article by the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United States, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, titled Religious Tolerance in Bahrain, in which he stressed that Christians, Hindus, Jews and others perform the rituals alongside the Muslim brothers, which reflects the Kingdom's respect for all cultures. The senior policy advisor to the Secretary of State, Brian Hook, also praised the Kingdom's leadership for deepening their commitment to peaceful coexistence and religious freedom.